Yo, welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel, and I'm pretty excited. We got more new card reveals. I know we just did a video earlier today where we looked at four new Ogre Pond EXs that were revealed, but now there's even more new card reveals to look at. We got a brand new Grin Ninja EX, a brand new Ace Spec, some new trainers, supporters, a lot of new Pokemon. I'm excited to take a look at everything that got revealed. I know we just did one earlier today, but hey, man, a double upload it never hurt anybody. And I'm excited to look at these new cards. These will all be featured in our May set, Twilight Masquerade. And, of course, all these cards are from Crimson Haze in Japan. And also, some of the new cards are going to be in the Mask of Change set in Japan. But, again, all these sets are going to be releasing in our Twilight Masquerade set. That is going to be coming out in May. So, I guess if you guys want to go watch the... The uh, Ogre Pond reveal video I uploaded earlier today. Definitely go check that out after this video. If you are new here to the second channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We're on the road to 12,000 subscribers. And if you go on to enjoy the video, leave a like. Let me know what you think of these new cards down in the comments below. And, of course, I'll leave a link to Poke Beach if you want to go check out what these cards do uh, more in depth for yourself. So starting things off with the Crimson Haze reveals, we'll go and take a look at all these here. We have seen... A bunch of these cards already, but we might as well take a look at some of the ones we haven't looked at. I don't think we've looked at this new Tangrowth yet. There's actually some interesting grass cards we're getting within these new sets. We got Tangrowth here with Jungle Body. It takes 30 less damage from attacks, and then it has Loom Over. does 150 damage, minus 10 more damage for each damage counter on it. It does do a nice chunk of damage. I'll say that. This Tangrowth does hit pretty hard. It's not a bad card. I don't think it's very playable, though, unfortunately, but it is cool. Uh, I think we've seen all of these. We haven't seen this new Leafeon yet. We did get some evolutions revealed in today's set uh, reveal, but we do have a Leaflet Blessing as the attack. For one colorless energy, you can attach a basic grass energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon on the bench, and if you attach energy to a Pokemon this way, you get to heal all the damage from it. So it's not a bad attack. Getting to heal all the damage from one of your Pokemon can be pretty good. Of course, you can combine that with the fact that this is energy acceleration. Um, so I don't know. You can have like something in the active, Probably a grass Pokemon, maybe Torterra EX. It takes a hit, you switch it out, you can then Leaflet Blessing, and then fully heal it. The downside of Leafeon is you're not doing any damage. So I don't think this card is going to be very playable, unfortunately. Seeing the Iron Leaves. We do have a brand new EX here to look at. The Sinestra EX, I think that's what it is. I think. I'm, I'm not too sure, but I think it's Sinestra EX here. I think that's what it's called anyways. But it does have two attacks, and it is a grass Pokemon. Keep in mind, of course, being a grass type, very relevant in the format against Charizard. First attack, Infusion Retribution. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon, and you put two damage counters on that Pokemon for each basic grass energy in your discard pile, and then you get to shuffle those energies back to the deck. So it's very similar to what we see on the Hisuian and Basque Legion and the Volcarona V, where they put energy back into the deck. Now, they only attack the active. The nice thing about this EX card is you get to attack any Pokemon. That's kind of cool. A snipe attack that does that effect is honestly kind of sick. Now, we just have to figure out a way to build a grass deck that would have enough grass energy in the discard pile for this attack to do a ton of damage i'm talking we need probably at least like 12 energy in the discard pile in order for this attack to actually do relevant knockouts on basic two prize pokemon at the minimum so not a bad first attack the other attack um does 120 and you heal 30 from each of your pokemon play glasses i guess super effective glasses you can one shot of Charizard EX. Nothing too crazy here on this EX card, but I do like that first attack. If we can figure out a way to make that first attack more explosive, this could be kind of decent. I'm not going to lie. New Nine Tails here. Nothing too crazy. We've looked at the Macargo uh, Infernape. We've already looked at. I think we've looked at this new Shiyu. Nothing too crazy on this new Shiyu. Um, new Crawdon's kind of cool. We haven't really had a good Crawdon in a while. Honestly, I think since what? Primal Clash way back in. 2015. Um, it's got Snip Snip, does 40 damage, flip two coins for each head, discard a card from your opponent's hand. So that's kind of cool. Um, not bad at all. Uh, you get to flip two coins. You could potentially discard two cards. Combine this with the new Unfair Stamp A spec, combine this with Iono or Judge or Roxanne, and it could be a fun hand disruption card. Could be good in control decks with reversal energy, maybe. If somebody can figure out a way to build a handlock deck, I'm just saying, I think there's a Gothitelle in the format that rearranges the top card of your opponent's deck. Boom, there you go. Con hand control is back, baby. All right, we got a new Glaceon here. Like I said, new evolutions revealed. It's got Deep Chill, does 30 damage, and at the end of your opponent's next turn, you put nine damage counters on the defending Pokemon. So it is kind of similar to what we've seen before with like cards like the Hisuian Zork that can knock your opponent's Pokemon out at the end of their turn. But I don't think that it's very good because it's you're not knocking anything out. You're only putting nine damage counters on that Pokemon. So realistically, you're only doing 120 damage, which I don't think is very relevant. 
Um, I think your opponent can also, like, obviously switch out of the active spot. If this is, like, your opponent's Pokemon, like, in the active took the damage, it'd be good. But I'm pretty sure they can, like, switch out of this effect. If this was just the Pokemon that, you know, even if they switch out, it takes damage, maybe this would have been a little bit better. But unfortunately, I don't think this Glaceon is very good. Uh, we've looked at the Fiona. We do have a Froki line. Now, of course, we got to get a new Froki line. It's got a new Greninja coming out. But this new Froki is, I guess, the optimal Froki to play. It's got Flock. For energy, you can search your deck for two Frokies and put them on your bench. So, nice little way to set up your board. If you're playing the Greninja EX, which we're going to get to very shortly, you are going to be able to have a decent Froki that puts you Frokies in play. Now, to be fair, the attack is kind of redundant when we already have Buddy Poffin in the format, which is just a good way to get Frokies out. But it is nice to know that we do have a decent, arguably optimal Froakie to play now if we're playing Greninja. We have a decent Frogadier too. Uh, does 20 and you can paralyze your opponent's active Pokemon on a coin flip. Not bad. Probably optimal to play. I mean, sometimes paralyzing your opponent can buy you a turn. It can come up. Not bad. So decent Froakie, decent Frogadier. Cramorant, I don't know if we've looked at this yet, but it does have Spit Shot. Does uh, 120 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. You have to discard all energy from it. It's literally like a reprint, kind of, from the Cramorant V from way back in Sword Shield base set. Um, this card could be okay, in all honesty. I think we've looked at the Walking Wake. New Zapdos here. Um, it does do 190 damage. Discard all energy from it. I will want to... I want to say... This Zapdos actually could have been good in a Flaffy box deck. If, if this card came out... Before rotation, this actually would have been an okay card to play in like a Flaffy toolbox deck. Like if we're if we want to build like a Flaffy one prize deck that just uses a uh, one prize Pokemon alongside Flaffy, this Zapdos actually could have been pretty good in that deck because that deck is really fun to play with all the one prize Lightning Pokemon. And of course, having Zapdos would have been nice because it's a really strong attacker that does good damage. That's one thing that a Flaffy toolbox deck is kind of lacking. If you're playing it with a bunch of one prizers, you don't really have a good one prize Pokemon that does decent damage. The Zapdos would have been great to play within a Flaffy one prize box deck. So unfortunately, this card is not going to come out with Flaffy. Flaffy is going to be gone by the time this comes out. Just wanted to point that out. This card's not very good, but if Flaffy existed, it actually would have been a different story. Um, more new cards here. I think we've already looked at most of these. Obviously, we've looked at Iron Thorns. Pretty good card. Just looked at the Frigoraph today. Uh, we do have a new Florges here we haven't looked at yet. It's got the Captivating Temptation ability. Once you're in turn, you can flip a coin of head, switch in one of your opponent's Pokemon from the bench into the active spot, and that new active Pokemon now is confused. So, not a bad ability. Uh, you obviously get a free gust effect, and it looks like you can choose any of the Pokemon. So, you can basically get a free boss's order on a coin flip, and you can confuse the Pokemon, which can be pretty annoying. Confusion's awkward to play against, like if you're playing against Charizard EX, for example, you bring in Charizard with this ability and confuse them, it could get awkward. Maybe you combine this with, like, spite ops the x or something to like make it hard for them to move i don't know it's an okay card nothing too crazy though it is gust on an ability which is nice it is on a coin flip however and a stage two so it's a little risky but i don't know this floor just isn't terrible don't know if it's gonna see play but it is a cool ability nonetheless um new enamorous here so ironically enough we got everyone's favorite pokemon enamorous but this actually isn't even that bad of a card for three energy a psychic and a double colorless um it does 120 more damage if you have the same type as one of your opponent's Pokemon in play. And you are already doing 80 base damage here. So you actually get to do 200 damage. Now you have to match the type. But maybe you could play this with like a, a deck with a bunch of Pokemon that are different types like if you're playing it's charizard you just need like a fire or a dark type in play to do 200 damage this could you know be accelerated with zatu maybe that could be kind of cool so i don't know not the worst card ever i wanted to mention that we actually got like an okay enamorous because everybody loves enamorous everyone's favorite pokemon all right into the fighting types gonna do hisuian arcanine here uh it does have an interesting um attack here it's got proud fangs for no energy whatsoever just 30 damage and if your bench pokemon have any damage counters on them you can do it 90 more damage so for no energy you can do 120 damage that's not bad you can obviously play this with the gengar from lost origin or gape jaw bog in order to activate the attack so it's not bad uh you can play this with the other hisuian arcanine too from lost origin that does 160 damage if you have no cards in your hand a uh, new Proba Pass here. Salt Laser does 80. If your opponent's active Pokemon has a tool on it, does 80 more damage. This does work with Reversal Energy. So, cool. I mean, could be good against Iron Hands EX to one-shot it. They're probably going to have Future Booster Capsule or the new Baton on it, maybe. I don't know. Just trying to, trying to be wishful here. But, of course, the big story. We got a brand new Greninja EX. And this card is actually pretty insane. It is very similar to Rapid Strike Urshifu. 
VMAX, which is rotating, but now it's going to be back with Greninja. We got another playable Greninja card. So it is a fighting type Terra Pokemon, which is pretty cool. Obviously, being a fighting type is really relevant because you can hit for weakness against Lightning Pokemon like Iron Hands and Maridon, and you can hit for weakness against Arceus V-Star. Now, it does have the first attack, Ninja Blade, does 170 damage for one water energy, and you can search deck for any one card and put it into your hand. That's kind of insane. You can combine this with Pidgeot EX maybe, and you can like get like essentially two cards over the course of two turns for free, which is kind of sick. This could also allow you to set up more Greninjas. If you don't get Iono or whatever, you can like use this attack to get like another rare candy and then set up another Greninja for the following turn, which is pretty cool. Now the main trait about this card, I think is going to be that second attack duplicates barrage. This is where this card is essentially Rapishek Urshifu's twin. It does 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon and you have to discard two energy from it. It does require a water and a double colorless. Now you could play this with double turbo, which you, then you you'd only be doing 100 damage to two Pokemon, but still, that's pretty good. 120 damage to two Pokemon is very strong. Like I said, this card is very similar to Rapid Strike Urshifu. Same type, and kind of identical attacks. Even though the first attack doesn't do the exact same thing as Gale Thrust, it is similar. You do one energy for, like, a solid chunk of damage. That's basically what Urshifu did. Um, yeah, this card is actually pretty good. Now, this could be good when Manaphy rotates out of the format, because then we lose that bench barrier on a basic. There is Rabska, which is, I think, Manaphy and Jirachi in one card. But Rabska is a stage one, not a basic Pokemon. So if you Greninja them quick enough, you can immediately take two prizes. Now, I don't know how good this will be. It is a stage two, right? You can't use it with Irida. It is a fighting type, not a water type Pokemon. That's the other awkward thing about this Greninja. Uh, but it isn't a bad card. It's got two very strong attacks. Again, I think the first attack is really good. You could even use the first attack with, like, Turo Scenario. If you can chain Frogadiers and Greninjas in play, you could spam Ninja Blade with Turo Scenario and constantly heal this Greninja every single turn. It takes a hit, you Turo it into a new Greninja, you just kind of loop Turo over and over with Ninja Blade. That could be a really interesting archetype. But, yeah, I think this card is actually kind of sick. Um, definitely a very playable card. We'll have to see how good it is. Um, it's got two good attacks, and uh, that is definitely a good thing. This Greninja, not going to lie, it is pretty darn good. Thumbs up for me. All right. We've got a new Hulucha. Uh, prize count. If you have more prizes remaining than your opponent, you do 90 more damage. So you do 140 for two energy. It's okay. It's not great, though. I don't know how you're going to build it up, to be honest. Uh, new Tinglu here. We got Ground Crack. If there's a stadium in play, you can do 30 damage to each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, and then you discard at that stadium. So that's actually kind of cool. A free... Uh, spread attack is sick. I mean, 30 damage to each Pokemon honestly isn't terrible. Um, yeah, I don't hate it. Of course, you do need a stadium in play, but if you're going to play this card as its own archetype, as like a spread deck, you could just play it with a bunch of stadium cards. Not a bad attack, actually. It's a basic Pokemon with 140 HP. It's kind of bulky. I don't hate it, actually. I think this thing was actually kind of cool. If you want to build a spread deck, this could be a decent attacker to play within the deck. I know, obviously, Manaphy exists. That's, like, the big hurdle this card will have to face. But, I don't know, it's not a bad spread attack. 30 damage spread is pretty good. And it's not that hard to pull off. You just get a stadium out. And, if, again, if you just play this card, you, you build your deck around it, you just play a lot of stadium cards, you can make that work. Cool stuff. Um, I think we've already looked at the Applin and the Diplin here. We do have a new Eevee, uh, Ascension. Search check for a card that evolves from this Pokemon and then put onto that Pokemon. I mean, we've seen this before with these Eevees. New Snorlax here. Attach energy from your hand to this Pokemon. If you do, heal 60 from it. Eh, not a great card. Five energy from 160 is pretty abysmal. We've looked at Blood Moon or Saluna, obviously. Unfair stamp we've looked at. But we have a new Ace back here, Hyper Aroma. And I'm not going to lie, this is a bit of a letdown of an Ace spec card. In fact, I actually think this could be the worst Ace spec card. So, search your deck for up to three Stage 1 Pokemon, reveal them, and put them into your hand. So, it is a free Pokemon search card. Getting three Stage 1 Pokemon isn't terrible. The problem is, will you really want to run this over any other Ace spec that's probably better than it? Like, Unfair Stamp, Above Us... Cat, Prime Catcher, Maximum Belt, hell, even Master Ball could be better than Hyper Aroma in some scenarios. Now, there are decks that could play this, something like a Goldengo EX deck. That's one deck I've seen people talk about. Goldengo EX could play Hyper Aroma. I mean, you could play this in potentially, you know, any Stage 1 Toolbox deck. Maybe like a Scizor Box deck could play this. Um, I've seen some Scizor low kicks deck doing pretty good in japan so i don't know maybe there are niche uses for it but would you really rather play this over prime catcher if you're playing goldengo right is it better to play this or prime catcher now the other deck i think people are talking about is gardevoir x you can use this in gardevoir to get three curlias for free which isn't bad but gardevoir 
the way it's built right now, you kind of have to play with Hero Cape. So I don't know about this one. I, this card is definitely cool, but I don't think it's very good. I could be wrong, though. And maybe this card sees a little bit of niche play. That's probably what this card will be. It'll be more of a niche card. It's essentially like... It's like Master Ball, I feel like. It's kind of like, it's just like another Master Ball. It's not a great card. If it actually grabbed any Evolution Pokemon, it, I mean, this card would have been, I mean, I, maybe it would have been a bit too good if you grabbed any Evolution. Maybe they could have limited it to, like, two Evolution Pokemon, but, I don't know, a bit of a letdown of an Ace spec. Um, I guess there are certain decks that could play it, but, unfortunately, it's not great. Uh, Catcher Switch, um, we've looked at Survival Cast, Lucky Helmet. We do have a new supporter here, uh, Lucian. Each player shuffles their hand and puts it at the bottom of their deck. And then if either player puts any cards at the bottom of the deck in this way, uh, each player flips a coin. If heads, that player will draw six. If tails, they draw three. So it's kind of like Iono. Uh, where you put the cards at the bottom of the deck, and you can draw a certain amount of cards. So it could be early game hand disruption. You could force your opponent to get three cards if they flip tails, but they could also draw six new cards. But you could also draw only three cards. So I don't know. I mean, in a meta with Bibral Skulvit, this actually isn't a terrible supporter in all honesty. I don't know if it's going to see any play, though. It is an interesting effect, though. And if you do get lucky, I mean, you could literally get really lucky and make your opponent flip tails at the early, like, the beginning of the game. Making your opponent flip tails, drawing three cards, is devastating. That is worse than getting judged, because judge gives you four cards. That's pretty decent. Lucian gives you three cards. That's pretty bad. So, I don't know, man. This, I, this, this is, like, an okay card. I'm not sure it's super playable. As a description card, though, it could be pretty funny. Uh, we do have a new Perrin here. I don't think we've looked at it yet. Reveal two Pokemon from your hand. Shuffle them into your deck. Then search check for a Pokemon. Um, oh, yeah, we've already looked at it, I think. Yeah, I think we've already looked at this new card. It's Pokemon Communication other than a supporter, but a little bit better because you can reveal two Pokemon, um, which is kind of cool. Um, not bad card. I think we've looked at that already. We've looked at Lana, Community Center, Boomerang Energy we already looked at. And those are all the cards from Crimson Haze. But time to move on. We do have the Mask of Change cards to look at here. We do have another Sinestia. Now, this could be the Sinestia that you play the EX with. So, it does have the attack Cursed Droplets. So you could put four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon any way you like. And then you have a Match All Out here, which is the main attack and the one that you could use the EX with. So, it does 70 damage for one Grass Energy. Discard up to three basic Grass Energy from your Pokemon in play. And this attack does 70 damage for each card it discarded in this way. So, you can do 210 damage for discarding three Grass. And 210 isn't bad numbers. You could play this with, like, Defiance Band or Vitality Band or maximum belt to knock out basic ex pokemon and you can also one hit ko charizard ex which is obviously very very good and you can play this attack with the other sinestia ex that puts energy back in the deck so that's kind of cool there is like some kind of interesting sinestia archetype you can cook up with this deck um, and this card, not bad, cool, I guess. The only issue I see with it is how you get Grass Energy in play. Now, if Cherim was in the format still, this would be a lot better. I guess you could play this with Gardenia, so maybe that's how you play it. There is an item we're going to look at, actually, in a minute that does work with Grass Pokemon, and maybe that's how you play it. We got a new uh, Monkey Dory here. So it does have an ability, Adrenaline Brain. Once you're in turn, if it has any Dark Energy on it, you can move up to three damage counters from one of your Pokemon to one of your opponent's Pokemon. That's a cool ability, actually, and that's actually a useful ability. That's effectively giving you plus 30 more damage um, you can do in a turn, right, if you have this Pokemon in place. So that is not bad at all. Um, you do need a Dark Energy on it, so depending on the deck you play this in, it is a little awkward, but you could play this in a dark base deck, maybe play it in, like, Dark Rye V-Star. You could play this with Roaring Moon, I guess there's, like, a meme if, like, Frenzy Gouging you know, pops and you don't get knocked out somehow, you can do that, I guess. I don't know. It's an interesting ability, though. Um, it's a little, like, too specific, but it is a cool ability. We do have another new card here. Uh, Fens and Debate. I'm not going to pronounce that. It, bro, it's 3 a.m. right now. I'm, I can't. But it does have an ability. If this Pokemon has any Dark Energy on it, and if any damage is done to this Pokemon by attacks, you flip a coin of heads, prevent that damage. So, interesting ability. We've seen this before on cards like the Detective Pikachu Greninja, the new Jumpluff from Paradox Rift, uh, Dragapult from Rebel Clash. It's not a bad ability. Uh, honestly, yeah, it could be an annoying card. It is a basic Pokemon, which is kind of cool. It does need Psychic Energy, so you can play this with Zatu. You can Zatu Energy on it, and then you can attach Dark Energy from your hand to it, and then you can make its ability activate. So that's actually not bad. This is actually not a bad card, in my opinion, especially because that ability can be very annoying. And then you have Energy Feathers doing 30 damage for each energy on this Pokemon. It's only on this Pokemon, not both Pokemon, but that's not bad. I mean, you can still do, like, a decent bit of damage every turn. You can ramp the damage up with more energy. Yeah, this actually isn't a bad card with, like, Zatu, maybe. You can use Earth and Vessel to, like, find the two energy types, too. And then we got Okie Dogie. That is a sick name, but it does have the ability Adrenaline Power. If this Pokemon has any Dark Energy on it, it gets plus 100 HP and 
its attacks do 100 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. That's kind of sick. Now, the downside of this, this does mean you do need two fighting and a dark energy in order for this attack to do damage. But that's not bad if you can do that. I mean, 170 damage and you get 230 HP. Maybe pair this with Hero Cape or Luxurious Cape to give it, or Bravery Charm even. It is a basic Pokemon. You can give this thing a lot of health. And the big kicker is how are you going to build it up? So it could be good with like Coridon EX. Got to see Pickaxe, I guess, can build it up. I don't know. I, I forget all the fighting. I guess there's a new the new Infernape, I guess, you could play this with. I don't know. If you can find a way to build up the uh, Oki Punch Attack, it actually isn't a bad card. I mean, you can give it a lot of HP. Uh, it's not hard to get two energy types on it, thanks to cards like Earthen Vessel in the format. It's a cool card, for sure. Um, I definitely think the uh, the Feza here is probably the best of the new uh, little basic guys that got revealed here, just because that ability could be good. And you can synergize it with Zatu. But yeah, Okie Dogie's not bad at all. All right, we do have some cool new supporters to look at. This one's actually pretty insane. Carmine, if you go first, you can play this card during your first turn, discard your hand, and draw five cards. Now, imagine playing this in combination with Squawkabilly. You can see 11 new cards in a single turn. That's kind of insane. So this definitely is an interesting supporter. I think you can play this card at any point in the game. It's not just limited to your first turn. So it is basically a mini Professor's Research. Obviously, discard draw 7 is way better, but this card is still pretty decent nonetheless. I mean, discarding draw 5 isn't terrible either. Um, and the fact you can play it on your first turn going first is also pretty good so definitely not a bad card at all i mean i can see this being good this would have been kind of funny in the battle vip pass meta that we're in right now <laughs> not gonna lie but i don't know it's a cool supporter card let me know what you think of it down below i think it's actually playable and we got kieran here another new playable supporter actually a really good supporter um you do have a, a double effect supporter kind of like we do with serena it does have the effect of one you can switch your active pokemon with one of your bench pokemon or during this turn your opponent's pokemon's attacks uh, your Pokemon, I say your opponent, your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon EX or active Pokemon V. That's sick. This is basically like a reprint of Leon. Now, Leon was a pretty good supporter from back in the day. It basically let your Pokemon do 30 more damage to the active for that turn. Now, this does the same thing, but it's only on EXs and Vs, which is honestly fine. If I'm doing 30 more damage, I'm probably going to want to do more damage to those specific Pokemon anyways. Not a bad card. I really like this card. This could actually be like a decent two of in a lot of decks. If decks are just falling short on knockouts, this could be good. This could be good within Charizard EX. Arceus V-Star could play this. Uh, honestly, any deck could realistically play this. This is a great supporter. It's got the double effect. So if you ever need some way to like switch out your active, that could be really good. I mean, the more I look at this card, the more I think it's going to be good in decks like Charizard because it's also a free switch effect, which is insane. So yeah, this is definitely a very strong supporter. I could see this being like a two of in some decks. It doesn't draw you cards, right? But the double effect can pop up. There are going to be moments where you want to do either effect. And I am a big fan of this. Cards like this are really well designed, in my opinion. And this is another really cool card that I like quite a bit. So definitely happy to see this new Kieran card. Yeah, thumbs up for me. And then we got the new bug catching set. That's the last new card revealed here. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Choose up the two of any combination of grass Pokemon and basic grass energies and put them into your hand. So not a bad effect. I mean, it is a great card for grass decks. It is grass Pokemon search effectively. It's great ball and not really, I wouldn't really call it earthen vessel, but it is basically great ball for grass Pokemon alongside being able to get energy, which is really good. I'm actually... A pretty big fan of this card. Uh, I like it quite a bit for grass decks. It is nice that grass Pokemon are getting a little bit of support. Because if I'm going to be honest with you right now, grass is one of the weakest types in the game. Considering it should be one of the best types in the game to play right now due to Roaring Moon and Charizard's popularity. Especially Charizard looking forward when this card comes out in rotation. It is nice that they're giving grass Pokemon a little bit of extra support. Because grass Pokemon kind of suck to be honest. Like... like the only good one is like Iron Leaves, and that's about it. But it is cool that they got, gave us a new cool grass Pokemon search card. Not as good as Netball, which would have been a great new grass card they could have brought back. But yeah, I'll take it. Bug catching a set ain't bad. But yeah, those are all the new cards that got revealed. Again, two new EXs. Greninja EX looking pretty good. I'm a big fan of the new Carmine and Kieran supporter cards, and Bug catching set is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, a lot of cool new cards got revealed today. We got the Ogre Ponds earlier today. If you want to go watch that video after you finish watching this, go check out that video here on the second channel. I did upload that earlier today. But let me know what you think of the brand new cards down in the comments below. What do you think of the new A-Spec card? Do you think there's any other deck that can play the A-Spec other than like a Scizor deck or a Goldengo deck or any other Stage 1 deck that exists out there? I don't know. There's other Stage 1s, but... Those are the ones that come to the top of my head right away. But thanks for watching this video, and I'll catch you on another video. Again, make sure to subscribe down below here if you haven't already. Help me on the road to reaching uh, 12,000 subs. And yeah, I'll catch you on another video. Let me know what you think of the cards down below, and I will catch you all later. Bye-bye.